Hello everyone, welcome to MindMakers Podcast 12.0. Uh, this is Adit Kaparia coming to you from Houston. Along with me, as usual, are my partners in crime, Sunanda Vashisht and Pramod Kumar Buravalli. How are you guys today? Good. good. How are you, Thank Adit? You. Pretty good, pretty good. Um, ready for a invigorating session yeah. on uh, foreign policy, social issues, political yeah. issues. We're all feeling more. very empowered. I'm disempowered. You're disempowered? <laughs> I just want to say that she said she's empowered. So. <laughs> are you disempowered because of something or are you just disempowered because she's empowered? As soon as I saw Deepika Padukone's uh, this thing, proclamation. Huh. I was really feeling depressed. Oh, you were feeling you were depressed? depressed? Ah, because she must she have normally... gone through so many different uh, uh, takes and retakes to portray her depression. <laughs> it made me depressed <laughs> after seeing that. Okay, how hard it must be. Yes, 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 yes. Pramod, this is sarcastic jibes on women empowerment. <laughs> Mind you, for his broader views on women empowerment, go to podcast 8.0. We had uh, done a pretty uh, yeah. interesting podcast on yeah. understanding the daughters of India. That was the real that talk the real about thing. empowerment. Yes. Yeah. Today is um, uh, Paris Hilton style of empowerment. Paris Hilton. But that, that's part two. We'll come to the fun yeah. stuff later. Uh, so let's uh, get uh, talking about the serious stuff. The first part of the podcast is going to be about uh, the US Iran uh, deal. Nuclear, deal. nuclear deal, deal, you know, the talks, Iran talks, that was the hashtag on Twitter yeah. that happened. And just giving you like a, you know, 360 degree view of uh, what what it means uh, for the world. It's a watershed moment for the world, no Absolutely. doubt about it. And, and the US Iran relations have been like on a, on a, almost like a sinusoidal curve, you know, you had during the Shah's time, you had a different sort of complex and then came the Khomeini where you saw historic... From 1979, there has been absolute clam down. From 1979, no United States president has dealt with Iran in any way. So for the last 35 years, it's been pretty much, you know, down. So uh, Sunanda, am I I sensing you giving credit to Barack Obama for doing this with Iran? But uh, this is definitely something that Barack Obama is going to write his book about. This is his legacy. (laughs) This is what he is trying to get down, get down after. What he's trying to do is he is trying to realign <coughs> Middle East. Actually, but in our first podcast, we were talking about, uh, uh, you know, we talked about first or the second one. This was pre- before Mindmakers was launched. We did a podcast on the US elections. Right. And if you guys yeah. remembered, we said that a progressive president, uh, Pramod actually said a progressive president only Sorry wants one president. thing. Mm. Yeah, uh, legacy building. So he has two feathers on foreign policy, Cuba and Iran. And that could have been due to his advisors, people negotiating. No, but he, but has, a he has bigger, bigger, bigger role to draw- play. No, he has a bigger thing in his legacy, which is not very positive, and that is ISIS. I agree. ISIS became a monster that it did under his watch and something he dismissed as varsity, varsity. Uh, junior varsity. Absolutely. So you have two feathers, but no hat. So, and <laughs> so I am not too sure if um, Iran will sort of Iran deal. First of all, we don't know if this is I'm finally going saying, to happen. No, no. Yeah. This is a draft. That this is a draft. In June 30th is another still, deadline still when they will do this. To kind of, uh, and there that. is another thing. Ever so often, the world powers, the world equations change. Yeah. And and people who are on the stage at that time, they happen to get the credit for it, but uh, the world does not remain Before the same. Before you complete about the world equations, she, you know, we have a funny, we had a funny instance last time in Yemen, you had the allegedly Iran, Houthis who were close to Iran uh, on one side, and then you had the Sunni side, which was led by Saudi Arabia, and people said that US was on that side, and at the same yeah. time, US and Iran were negotiating. See, there are no binaries, there are no good and bad in it. So what people like us, who are just watching and yeah. who are uh, independent, independent observers, yes. not even independent, but people who are political uh, observers or geopolitical observers, we just look at it and we realize that friends can become foes, foes can become friends, United States can fight two wars along with Russia and then become the greatest enemy after World War II. Actually, you know, B. Raman writes Germany, it in his, Germany is a friend now. <laughs> yeah. B. Raman writes it in his book, The Cowboys of Raw, about the cooperation between intelligence agencies also like that, that in, in one area, one intelligence agency might be helping out Raw and in other area, yeah. they're backed other intelligence agencies opposing raw. Yeah. So this was pretty common. I'm not saying that foreign policy is as simplistic or just on the same level. Foreign policy is not about friendships and animosities. Foreign allies. policy is about allies and foreign policy is about your interest at that particular <coughs> But Pramod wanted to say something. Uh, I was yes. just about to yeah. kind of uh, talk about the uh, kind of a segue to what we had discussed on Yemen is the the kind of early uh, uh, years of uh, the current Saudi uh, ruler 
and hence the uh, Iranians being in a better shape to negotiate are gaining a upper hand with their influence kind of clamping on our ISIS at least showing to the western world that they are willing uh, to kind of take up the cudgels against the hardline Islamists that are really uh, have a much more world and a globalized Islamist view which Iran mm -hmm. does not and has never had that absolutely uh, kind of Adit if you remember in the northern alliance which was the um, the main um, opposition that was fighting uh, the Al Qaeda in Afghanistan right. pre 9-11 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. was actually aided by Iran and Russia mm -hmm. so this Shia Sunni conflict has a much more wider political angle to it whether Iran wants the Islamic world to concentrate exclusively on their rules and concerns with Israel and Palestine or for that matter this wider conflict um, uh, broadening of the conflict by people like the ISIS and the others mm -hmm. uh, is to be seen and I yeah. can give you a history of that uh, when, when uh, the session starts. So it's interesting to notice that the Sunni and Shia divide will always remain. So there will always be a divide between Wahhabi Sunni Saudi Arabia versus Shiite Israeli. Um, Israel? Uh, sorry, Shiite. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a bad faux pas. Bad faux pas. Um, is, uh, I, 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 I hope Netanyahu doesn't hear this. Oh my God. I know, we will, we'll, come, we'll come to the Israel and Iran relations. Yeah, I know. Which, which Sunanda conflict, conflated <laughs> using oh a very God. weird <laughs> analogy. That the history of uh, that region has oscillated between control between various parties with the colonial powers and uh, the United States uh, kind of butting in in 1953 actually deposed a, a democratically elected prime minister brought in the Shah of Iran mm -hmm. who ruled from 53 until 79 then against the popular sentiment hence uh, Ayatollah, Ayatollah Khomeini when he came and uh, uh, talked about the Islamic revolution it was a bloodless coup mm -hmm. uh, the Shah, Shah basically fled Iran Ayatollah came in and he basically, the, the whole uh, Iran hostage uh, crisis, crisis happened for 444 mm -hmm. days, led to the downfall. And Iranians were ecstatic about the revolution. Exactly. They had huge and, expectations. And the extent was... They hated Shah. There was usually, no question. Usually foreign policy does not lead to the downfall of a particular administration in the US. But that was the first time in 1979 when Jimmy Carter on one hand was trying to get the hostages out. Uh, there was a failed mm -hmm. uh, attempt to get them out uh, by the US commandos. Right failed and then almost when the hostage crisis was about to be so solved the whole thing played up in the US campaign Jimmy Carter lost elections and the hostages was released were released right after uh, Ronald Reagan uh, became president yeah. mm -hmm. so it is a kind of a love and uh, love hate sort of a thing relationship that you, uh, US and Iran have had not that the Republicans have had a love relationship or kind of a cozy relationship with them. Even during Reagan's administration, administration there was an Iran uh, uh, arms scandal called the Contra scandal. Contra scandal. Huge scandal. Iran Contra scandal. scandal. Iran Contra was basically scandal. the profits from selling yes. weapons to Iran Wrong. was being uh, right. uh, kind of used to fund the Iran. Yeah, that was a huge what is crisis. Weird was, I thought when it came to Iran and Israel, the Democrats and the Republicans, I won't say had the same stance, but they had a lot of points of, you know, where they would... Con Convergence. convergence, yeah. But for the first time, I thought uh, in the this presidency, uh, the U.S. relationship against Israel was interesting, and the U.S. Uh, took an interesting turn. So did the U.S. relationship with Iran. And we're gonna, you know, uh, Pramod gave an excellent overview of historically what happened. We're gonna then uh, we're gonna explore the contemporary issues and what this means for contemporary world politics. So let's see how that. And, and, and you know, keeping my promise to Sunanda, I will let her talk about the Israel-Iran relationship. <laughs> 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 to talk about so, Israel. Yes. So yeah. th that would be the next part of it. What does it mean for the contemporary world? So uh, moving on to more contemporary uh, debate on the US and Iran relationship. Uh, how would you define it, Sunanda, now, like as after the deal? Has anything substantially First changed? First of all, the deal hasn't happened yet. There is still, um, as they say, a uh, proverbial slip between the cup and the lip. So we'll see when that happens. But the thawing has happened. They have both agreed to, uh -huh. in um, uh, principle at least, they have agreed to the um, deal. We'll see what happens. No one has seen the um, fine print of the deal yet. Right. But what is interesting is that what choice did America have other than engaging Iran? There were two choices as what have been ha what has been happening since 1979 sanctions and we have seen that all the sanctions of the world have not stopped from Iran pursuing nuclear 
bomb or nuclear energy. Hmm. Uh, second would be um, go out for a war with Iran and dismantle their nuclear um, capability. Well, that is not a possible um, thing mm -hmm. right now. The, uh, America cannot afford to go for a war, and it's not something that would gain them world sympathy either, because what entire America, sympathy Americans will go to cannot afford Americans to cannot go for a war. war. So you do not go, uh, you do not wage a war against a sovereign country which wants to go and uh, have a nuclear capability. You cannot do that. No, but Adit, why didn't you? Why did you think that uh, US cannot afford to go to war because of 17 trillion dollars debt? No, I said American people cannot afford. Or to go what for their mean? for America. See, as as an Indian, I do think objectively about this, and that's why I said. You think war fatigue? Americans are never no, war not fatigue. for war fatigue, tax fatigue. I don't tax think fatigue. they want to pay more taxes. To, There's another thing about American about government. Americans. They don't get war fatigue. Huh? So, so the, the, but war is not a war was not a possibility. So the only thing Have they could speaking to John McCain <laughs> <laughs> but, No, it's no. a fact. The, no, no, no. I know. I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, broadly, we we are on the same page on this. this so the thing. only thing left for this thing is since 1979, they have not dealt with any regime in Iran. <laughs> so it, this is the point now, and all the sanctions um, in 2003, they had some. 200 centrifuges today they have 19,000 with the sanctions so what are you going to what is the sanctions um, helping even with sanctions Iran had oil that it was selling to friendly countries mm -hmm. so that was the source of its revenue so although Iran was hurting but the sanctions didn't completely break the back of um, Iran I think the Israeli concerns here um, are a little bit unfounded because Israel is a very strong um, country on its own right. Mm -hmm. But then if somebody were to even threaten or action taken against Israel, you have four nuclear powered countries, the Britain, uh, Great Britain, uh, France, uh, the US and Russia, Russia, which will come to its mm -hmm. rescue with about uh, 20,000 nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. I don't think Israel should probably look at it as a, an existential threat that if uh, they become energy efficient and they become much more compliant with the world, uh, uh, I would say at least as far as the uh, financial aspect. What about the nuclear race that it will um, start in the Middle East? What race? Uh, you, well, you, do you the, think this deal would have stopped that nuclear race? No, Israel race? has 300 nuclear weapons. Yeah. Undisclosed. But, yes. But and, do you think that this is any <laughs> and way unquestioned? Of, unquestioned. Uh, because Israel is surrounded by um, adversaries on all, 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 all sides and it does uh, deserve its existence. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are very gritty people who have survived that uh, hostile uh, neighborhood for a long time. But this uh, apprehension that this deal will lead to Iran to misuse that against all the collective wisdoms of the powers that have negotiated this deal is a little bit unfounded. Mm -hmm. A. B. The historical conflict between the Israelis and the Persian people civilizationally has been 3000 years old mm. back from the time uh, I was uh, the real conflict has been with them not with the Sunni not Bahabi the, uh, uh, and uh, also I do feel Asia. before you put that point that the Israeli point of view or something was also to do with a local political sentiment probably yeah. that was prevailing maybe against the deal and that could be one of the reasons and I agree with Sunanda's point on one thing that they had US had to engage with Iran they did not have another choice but to take it another contemporary thing that we've been talking about is oil prices no but that no, is no, no, no but that's where I go thing. back to my the, uh, the, my often repeated storybook uh, comment about uh, any liberal democrat president right. who has in early on in his career gotten a Nobel Peace Prize there's two places where he can intervene and deserve <laughs> Middle that East from well, Middle East and Kashmir Kashmir, <laughs> no, Kashmir he can't uh, basically do anything he has, Kashmir uh, we won't let him he's, 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 huh. he's, he's uh, probably gone uh, as far as that is concerned yeah. Israeli-Palestinian conflict Israel has clearly said that Palestinian yeah, yeah. state is not a possibility you know Nawaz so, Sharif Nawaz Sharif was so disappointed when huh? you said that Kashmir we won't let him intervene <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 here is the thing I will tell you what the uh, you know, Israeli position is. Israeli position is that now that you are engaging with Iran, what has changed about Iran? Has Iran said that Israel will exist 
No, Iran's state policy is annihilation of Israel. Israel um, Iran supports Hezbollah, whose, it is whose very policy naive, is, it is very that they will um, uh, of, of any, Israel should perish. But it is very naive in this day and age of any Islamic country thinking or saying or even putting into action a motion or a concept to annihilate Israel. But tell there me will which be six which, countries. I'm not talking about democracy. Tell me which. Um, uh, you know, mature nation or which mature state has terrorism as its state policy? Iran does. Are we talking about maturity or are we talking about a state? Are we talking? <laughs> no, but which state? No, okay, which state on, has terrorism no, 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 as its Pakistan does, and so does Iran. Uh, and then Houthis. Just now we're dealing with Houthis rebels as we talk. Okay. They are supported by Do you think Saudi Iran. Arabia does or no? No, Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. Saudi no, no, I asked you about Saudi Arabia. No, I'm telling do, do you think Saudi Arabia, do you Saudi put Saudi Arabia, Arabia, Iran and Pakistan in the same bracket? No, Saudi Arabia supports another uh, uh, role. I asked you a different question. Mm. Does Saudi Arabia, Iran and Pakistan are on the same level? To me, yes. Yeah, then the US policy towards them should be the same as well. Why should they have, just because, uh, Isra yeah, just because Israel's policy is different towards them. And you know, why should the US policy be different? See, I'm just, everyone to be, uh, I'm just being, being playing a devil's advocate. My, my position is, you know, and I, I agree with you that any state that has terror as a state policy, you know, should not, but what, what can the US government do? Nothing. No, no. I tell you, any country that is unable to go uh, at a, uh, uh, it's all about uranium. It's all about that enrichment fuel that of uranium. The country does not have. They mm -hmm. mastered the technology. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. Have they the just fuel. don't have the fuel. fuel. That's fuel. all it is. Yeah, this is all it is. Yeah. yeah. Now they are playing and they are buying time. Mm. Everybody knows that they are buying time. Mm. If again after ten years or fifteen years they are able to get to that bomb, maybe five, make five. By the way, after bombs, ten years, all this, all these, um, you know, all these whatever this thing is going to sunset clause is going uh, to come in, and uh, they are so free to make a bomb if they want to. So basically, a storybook presidency, Obama yeah. trying to initiate something to basically get a thaw in that relationship, number one. Number yeah. two is Israel's security is never threatened by a country in that region for the next 10 to 15 years because of one big important fact is they are fighting themselves to death. They will not unify and Israel should not give them, give them an opportunity to unify. This but they, al simple. they always unify against Israel. Right. I agree with that you. They always have viewed Israel as the common enemy. Yeah. And would all they did that in 1948 when mm. Israel was just and completely and by, by uh, surrounded opposing by opposing this nuclear deal which does not give anything to Iran. BB is unifying them against Israel, which is what probably he wants to have. I'm not or sure. I'm not sure. I would go to the extent of saying that it's not giving anything he, to maybe, Iran. Maybe he has to oppose it. The for sanctions local are lifted immediately. No, but it cuts down that 20,000 centrifuges to 7,000. Natanz is under uh, uh, that main reactor main is reactor. under uh, international uh, right. inspection. Iraq, which is the, now producing that weapons grade plutonium, will be constantly inspected and changed over. This. This is These all are, dependent on the fact that they don't, inspections are actually successful. We have known that inspections have always not been very successful. Well, and inspections, whether they happen or not, that's the first thing. Yeah. But I think the major issue also that a lot of people were having is how would this impact global energy prices? Right. And oil prices, especially people were concerned. I personally don't think and CNBC has some fascinating articles on it as well, that for six months to one year, I don't think we're going to see a major decline or something. But then again, I don't predict to read the minds of OPEC. Look, so, Iran is cooperating at this point in time in the fight against ISIS, which is the biggest. That is the real Earth. deal. That is the reason has to be why supported it has been in that missing. deal where ancient uh, civilizational um, uh, vesti I mean, heritage structures are being destroyed by these schools. Uh, people mm -hmm. and if Iran is taking the leap Saudi Arabia is half-hearted in this effort Iran should be supported with a temporary uh, nuclear agreement which is what they are celebrating about mm -hmm. BB should not be uh, exaggerating the kind of uh, threat it is threat. to him yeah Iran is never a threat to Israel Israel I, can wipe out Iran in one minute yeah and uh, uh, this I don't know I don't know um, about another that. Pro point is the Saudi thing that Saudi Saudi believes that basically if you keep Iran under check for right now and trimming the trimming their resources would result in a better nuclear deal in future but that could also be stemmed by the Shia Sunni conflict that has played exactly. the both regions yeah. and they want to have the compete the comp uh, the competition for the leadership of the Let Middle me East. ask you a question. Does Iran want a bomb? Yeah. Yeah. Are they going to build country, one? Uh, will be making that effort on an ongoing basis. And we, no matter and what happens, yeah. their straight resources will no, be but And America sh cannot and should not stop anybody from having no, no, a bomb. No, but this is the thing. Is the deal 
or having no deal going to affect whether Iran gets a bomb yeah, or not. Yeah, that's the point. No, yeah, no I don't know. think so. They no. went from 200, as I said, 200 centrifuges to 19,000 centrifuges right. with sanctions. The US did whatever it could to try to get North Korea off the trigger. North Korea now has 12 operational nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. It can't be prevented, I'll tell you. Yeah. But will they be using it? Will they decide to use it? Yeah. Are they aware of their uh, consequences? That is to be seen, and if Iran so shoots is, off, if Iran shoots off at least one rocket uh, of a long-range nature towards Iran, mm -hmm. that will be the end of Iran. Mm -hmm. they, those guys have survived and, for three thousand five hundred years. And, and that's why. Also, so, are you telling me that <laughs> America is getting into this deal knowing that Iran will make a bomb? <clears throat> no, Saudi Arabia is at its weakest. Mm. Iran has to be made a counter magnet to Saudi Arabia. And Iran is cooperating in all aspects. They they are fighting tooth and nail against this ISIS uh, uh, yeah. madcaps. So Iran has to be strengthened. So yeah, what what you were saying about uh, promote about Israel, you know, they need to tone little bit of the rhetoric down. I think we heard uh, BB saying uh, 190,000 uh, centrifuges or something. There were some claims of that much. And now that Iran has gone down to 6,000 centrifuges, that those claims fall flat. I mean, but at the same time, I would mm -hmm. caution against. Um, considering the existential threat against Israel a joke, it isn't. No, Israel is saying... seriously threatened, so we should not wish that away, saying that just because Israel has America's back with um, uh, Mr. President Obama, I'm not sure about that, but um, and plus it's a nuclear um, state, we should not think that Israel does not have threats. It does. It does have existential threat. Okay. There are people in the world okay. that would that want Israel to be wiped out from the face of map. Uh, and point one, there are people like that. Point two, can they do it? I am not so sure. And their fears maybe you know may have some findings. Can they do it? Not because they wouldn't try. Not for lack of trying, but because of Israeli um, that's you know, what way to saying. promote. Uh, that's protect what promote themselves. Saying. No, that's that called other mad. people will not stop trying. No, but there is something called mad. Hmm. It is called mutually assured destruction. Now, this is going to be double mad hmm. if somebody thinks right. by destroying Israel, their civilization will continue to exist. Yeah, that's Entire true. Islam will be finished. Yeah, that's true. No, we, we are talking, you know? and again, we are talking about checks and balances. Hmm. And, and you know, that's what I'm saying. The threats may, may not be completely unfounded. There might be. But the extent of it, I think it's a little bit of an and overplay. The Middle East is so complicated. Honestly, to wrap it up, there are two conflicts that will never finish in Middle East. One conflict is between the Persian, what you were referring no. to, Persian Empire and right. Israel, because it's right. almost 3,000 years old. Right. No. So that is going to, you only had to hear Netanyahu talk in the Congress here and you could sense it. He said something like, um, it's buying in Persian Bazaar where you always get, um, you know, mm. <laughs> looted or something like that. So you knew that this is an old um, problem. Yeah, but for and the other problem is Shia and Sunni problem. That is also not ever going to get resolved. The whole world has to find a way through these problems. Mm. Okay, and Israel and uh, uh, Iran both actually have a very uh, on and off relationship with the US. Like Hillary Clinton once said, the, the most uh, uh, prominent uh, mm. nightclub uh, goers in uh, New York City are either Iranians or Israelis. <laughs> It's interesting that you quoted Hillary on foreign policy, especially. I don't know whether that was sarcastic or poignant. <laughs> no, this is an extension of that policy. I, I if she know. Were to I, become I, I, the I'm president, just, yes. And this is Tory Brook, go, left God a help. liberal, uh, democratic yeah. president. And God help America. <laughs> but our goddess. God help yes. America. No, but yeah, exactly. And, and to uh, actually, we 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 had a pretty interesting discussion on the foreign policy on the, what happened in Yemen uh, on on our last podcast. So if you haven't heard it, I would urge you to go back and listen to podcast 11.0 on on. Yemen and it's almost kind of taking it forward when you talk about the Iran nuclear deal and when uh, Surinda brought up a fascinating point that every US president thinks that they can solve the Middle East crisis and every, every US president leaves it more volatile. Yes. In fact there are multiple guarantors of Israeli security and existence and prosperity but Iran is an orphan. Yeah. Iran's nobody would care even Saudi Arabia wouldn't care if somebody were to attack Iran. Saudi Arabia why fact, why is Iran an uh, orphan? What happened to Syria? No. What in happened Syria, to Assad? What happened to where is Syria? Syria is busy. <laughs> Syria, is busy right? Syria is busy in its own affairs. Is Syria no, even but, a country now? <laughs> yeah, but uh, you no, know. there is no. I mean, what geopolitical reality is that the U.S. wants to get two power centers uh, back in the games before uh, what mm -hmm. it was seventy nine. 
Saudi Arabia on one side representing Sunni Islam, uh, Iran representing Shia Islam, Islam, and both will have their own uh, carrot and stick approach. Absolutely. Interesting points. Fascinating discussion as always. And uh, well, hopefully we are hoping for more discussions and probably a follow up once the nuclear deal is signed. Uh, June 30th. Or whenever it is signed, June 30th, mm. as she said. And we'll talk about that. Part two, we're going to delve into a more uh, social and socio-political topic. It's going to be on the lighter uh, on a lighter way. So we'll be back with part two. All right. So um, going from uh, sublime to farcical, going from Middle East to uh, that middle is of middle, middle of nowhere. So was the uh, I, I'm glad you didn't consider the Iran talks farcical. <laughs> no, no, they were not farcical. They have far-reaching. No, no, um, she's now thing. going to talk from Iran to Shiran. Uh, yeah. Shiran. 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 Yes. Shiran. Yeah. So did you guys watch the new video that has been taking Indian mainstream media and lots of videos have been taking Indian mainstream media, media by storm? And it has actually launched um, a couple of, I think, um, 10 or 12 spoof videos also. The so video that launched a thousand spoofs. Yeah, to, the video to modify that modified. a very famous quote. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, we are, as our um, listeners would know, we are talking about this Vogue empowerment video. And they've been making, this is the third in the series. They have made two before this. And this is the third empowerment. And I didn't agree with the first two either. Mm. This was, first one was with Alia Bhatt. Uh, second one was with... Um, Madhuri Dixit, if you remember, boys don't cry, and I thought they were a little. I must confess, I have yeah. not seen. Yeah, Madhuri I have video. seen. I have seen Alias, and I have yeah. seen Madhuri Dixits, and yeah. uh, but you could talk about them. They opened up a debate, mm -hmm. and so they were not made spoofs of or fun of. But this third video, which has been directed by Homi Arjania, and um, it features uh, Deepika Padukone and 90 more women. So it's all black and white, very neatly shot, beautiful, looks like an ad, a shampoo ad, which many people have saw <laughs> that people are actually shooting for shampoo. You know, shampoo. if you had... Um, very bad you, shampoo, actually. Yeah, it's, it's actually, to me, it left me cold I, as a woman. I'm telling you, and I'll get your opinion on this. It left me cold. It just left me feeling, why are these women having a bad hair day? Or why are they sp even worse than that? I felt that why are they use talking such bad poetry? So what was what? that snowfall to snowflake? I know, it's something, something. I am the, I'm not a snow, I'm not a snowflake. You, I'm the universe. See, so it was, it was a very poor, it was eighth grader, um, you know, uh, when we eighth were very, grader? no, I used I'm to write pretty good poetry. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking, it was 8th grader talking I'm about Milan reader. Kundera. Sometimes, you know, these 8th, 9th graders read Milan Kundera and then uh, they sit and they talk Milan about Kundera again, no, <laughs> <laughs> So then they will talk about him and, you know, so it was really this, it was juvenile. When we talk about women empowerment, what I felt a little, it left me cold and I wasn't offended or anything, but it, it it's their choice. No, As the video is called choice, no, so I they have all the you. choice to make it. But what I felt a little sad about was that women empowerment, something as serious as that should have been made into such a no, it's not about you know, that actually such the, a joke. the video probably can be atrocious or something what what uh, amazed me or something or some of the points that were raised that you know one of them was in, uh, encouraging adultery in marriage or something like that and what that made me think what if a man would make the same and a lot of commentators have said that yes, you yeah. know, what if a man would come out with the same video what do you think the reactions of our same mainstream media do you think there'll be woman empowerment See, this, be is like, oh, this is a problem sexist this is the thing I mean, the discourse is so far. I, or know, if a man had said, I will have a relationship outside of marriage then, or something, exactly. then, then women would have and, said and, that and, so, and, uh, and by the way, I must confess, Sunanda has given me the honorary title of feminist after uh, our stance taken and on promote too. And promote too. I'm, I'm, well. I'm, I am proud to be presenting this podcast with two biggest feminists that I know. <laughs> so I, um, I have no, but you know, th that is the problem. You know, this kind of feminist, it, it treats man as an other, the opposite sex is other. Feminism is about equality of rights, that both should have equal rights. It is not about othering the other person, saying the other person is a villain, the other person, you don't care about whether I have two children or three children or five children or none. But if you are in a relationship and a husband and a wife, or not even a husband and a wife, but if you are in a relationship and you decide to have children, it is the problem of both people. Mind you, you know, Sunanda, there are a lot of self-styled experts in Delhi. Whenever like the news channels cannot find panelists, they call them to give their yeah. news. And a couple of those spoke in support of this and they said you should be so thankful that oh because of these we are talking about these issues Are you, we were, were, you, were you about any issues? Were you in your cocoon or something? 
we still were talking about women's empowerment issue without uh, uh, this video being shown no, it's no. Just, we were, it we just were, makes a joke of this whole women empowerment thing women empowerment is not about coming home at 4 in the morning or 5 in the morning those are personal issues it does not matter um, this thing when we talk about women empowerment we talk about a wider group wider. we talk about women with who have rights maybe these women should have said that um, a video should have been made that women and men should have parity in um, you know job but then again, we should uh, salaries not why is no one talking the about the best that? quality path breaking earth shattering journalism from vogue india yeah. So <laughs> I think people should start with that also. This, was this is a magazine that features women with never features women with uh, real pictures. They have to airbrush them. They have to uh, photo. What is that? Um, Photoshop so they're, them. They're, they're, they're powering up the pictures. Yeah, yeah. Photoshop them. them. The day Vogue publishes regular pictures of regular women who mm. have regular sizes and not size zero sizes i will think that they have done something about oh, empowerment even, even they, they had somewhere about i can be a size zero or a size 50 and in there they had shown a pregnant woman oh, i mean what does that mean nothing no it, I'll, I'll tell you they should rename themselves vague india, vague india. <laughs> it was so no vague. i have another funny name for them but i'd rather not repeat yeah. that generally, it was very vague generally uh, the yeah. saying is men are from mars women are from venus, venus. i think this was made for those people only. yeah not for people, men and women from mars. Uh, Earth. 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 Because <laughs> there are women and men who face so many different issues all the time, yeah. whether it's rights or responsibilities, being mm -hmm. a single person, married person, yeah. whether they are separated, divorced, whatever it is, mm -hmm. they face all the uh, similar and same type of issues uh, with respect to uh, opportunities that are provided. Yeah. Now, if this was to be a, a, a kind of a, a, a personal account of what she might have faced mm. and this uh, girl I think comes from a very affluent family her dad used to play Prakash Padukone's daughter and, uh, if she but then she is just an actress it's, it's unfair to be no. talking about no, 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 yeah, because she's just an actress the, no but because she, was, no, she had not she, written no, the script she, no no she I think she believes in this I'll tell you there is a pattern you have to observe the pattern of what controversy she is getting into uh, on and off, whether it is to publicize our movie, and I know you wanted to talk about. No, that. I was just going to tell this publicity of movie picking up a social which is the Amir Khan model of movie promotion. Yeah, we saw Anushka Sharma do the same mm -hmm. thing. Amir Khan, you know, if they pick up social issues day to day, or or you know, in fact, Kangana Ranaut, huh? she said a very interesting thing. Hmm. She said women empowerment is about evolution hmm. of both men and women it has nothing to do with coming at six o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the night or uh, unless they something work in a call center. <laughs> i know those are those are personal issues if you are if you are making any choices then you have to be um, face consequences for them mm -hmm. men face consequences for their choices women face consequences so for their choices like an unofficial plug for the uh, book called hard choices yeah, yeah. Probably i was raised i people. always say this i was raised by a man who's the biggest feminist i have known my father so to say that you know to talk about and there are so many Indian men and I mean two of you my good friends my father my brothers my cousins my uncles and who have done so much in their own little way to promote women empowerment and for somebody to come and say that I'll have five children or no children it's not your choice I will do whatever I want it's not your choice after it's just one not. of the cases of women empowerment look at the people we have in the government we have you know ministers were setting an example doing phenomenal work yeah. and you know uh, I don't know I think this video is not to be discussed in any intellectual form or academic thing it is just meant to? to be laughed at and I guess uh, I, the main issue and the reason probably why they had the adultery thing was that probably to catch the eyeballs or something but if you mask that in a video uh, of you know where you're trying to say serious stuff or something it's hard for me to take you seriously yeah. and then you will be treated with the disdain and ridicule that you deserve this is not feminism this is and i'm not talking about dipika probably the writer or the writer, writer or, 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 or whatever this and is just human if this was educating uh, girls to be uh, more self sufficient kind of a follow up to what happened in the bbc documentary yeah. it's a very bad way to do it and to try to get publicity for an uh, upcoming movie or something uh, that you were inferring. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know if I she has say, to, but we're just uh, saying that uh, that has I been a. Say, yeah. I, would, I would say 
lot of issues uh, and sunanda ji your point is valid in terms of evolution of both rights responsibilities and the kind of opportunities that are being presented to both uh, men and women mm-hmm. is changing rapidly much faster than anybody can imagine i would say in the next 5 to 10 years you would be surprised that no profession that men were engaged in as an exclusive right privilege or again because they were there mm-hmm. at that point in time will be closed for women yeah. i'm i'm seeing that happening Mm-hmm. and if women for whatever reason have to um be given much more um, push up in terms of getting to uh, grab that opportunity yeah. they should be given and that is what i had talked about right. last time also yeah, the only push- thing i want to say is that i wish homi arjani or whoever wrote the script maybe homi did um, please write better poetry <laughs> this is this is painful yeah, push up is yeah and i agree you know push giving a push up is different and then you know justifying absolute nonsense yeah. is different yeah. so um, let, let's see how it works anyways that was on the lighter side um, th- that that i guess um, is our cue to wrap up the podcast yeah. for this week uh, thank you again for logging in uh, we tweet at, at @myindmakers um my personal twitter handle is at @ask0704 sunanda tweets at, at @s u n a n d a v a s h i s h t promote tweets at, at @p b u r a v a l l i uh do like us on facebook and follow us on twitter um we'll be we'll be coming to you with like more fun articles news podcast every week and some more funny fun interviews coming as well yes so do do stay tuned in we're featuring three interesting articles Uh, this week on uh, various social and political topics uh, do do check them out and uh, let us know how you feel uh, please gi- uh, we would uh, we would love your feedback and your comments on 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 this uh, keep supporting us and do log in uh, we'll see you next week thank you